Jeremiah chapter 50. And the word of the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Now we turn to Babylon. We looked at nine different things that God's against country. Declare ye among the nations and publish. And publish is what you do with a book. You make it available. And set a standard. That's like a flag. Publish and conceal not. Make it available. How many books are in these uh, other places that you know you can't see? It's locked up. God says publish it. Say to say Babylon is taken. Bel is confounded, and that's a god of Babylon. Murdoch is a god of Babylon. It's broken in pieces. How do you break a god in pieces unless it's an idol? Or a statue. Her idols, Babylon's idols, are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate. And none shall dwell there. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. In those days, and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come. They and the children of Judah together. So here's the unity of Israel and Judah that has not even been seen yet. Together going going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their God. This hasn't happened yet. They will ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And guess who will be seated in Zion, Mr. Jehovah Witness? In a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. We're, we're talking about a time that hasn't even happened. It's yet for future today. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Their leaders. It's because you think a guy's behind a pulpit. Just to think he... He's in charge, you know, doesn't mean they're the good. They have turned them away on the mountain. They have gone from the mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. They're just all over the place. All that found them have devoured them. So what's worse is these people are, are, are let loose by those who are supposed to be in charge of them. And then when they are found, they're eaten. They're killed. They're destroyed. And their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord. You know, we did it because they sinned against the Lord. We're, we're the vengeance of the Lord. No, vengeance is mine, save the Lord. I will repay. Against the Lord, the inhabitation of justice. Even the Lord, the hope of their father. You know, we, we took care of them for the Lord. We were so glad to be obliged to take care of Jew. And yet Genesis 12 says, I will curse them that curse you. Babylon was cursed for what only reason? God said, my servant. God said, I'm sending Babylon to do the judgment. But they did it against the Jews. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of Chaldean. And be as the he go before the flocks. The leader. For lo, I will raise and cause to the, the, uh, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. Now that ego is talked about in Daniel. They shall set themselves in array against her, an army, the Medes and the Persians. For then she shall be taken, and their arrows shall be as the mighty expert man. Well, we read about arrows last night with the bowl being broken. Here God's going to strengthen the bowl. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. And all the spoil her all that spoil her shall be satisfied, say the taking what it is, the, the war is over, the battle's over, and what you do is you go through the dead bodies in the homes and you take what you want. Gold, silver, whatever there is to be taken. Because ye were glad because ye rejoiced. O oh, ye destroyers of my heritage, Jews. 
because ye are grown fat as a heifer of, at grass, and bellow as bulls. Bull, bulls. Can't say bulls. Yeah, they just fatten themselves on the spoil. Fatten themselves. For your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. This is what describing Babylon. There's gonna be no more pride. There's gonna be no more proud. There's no it's just desolation, wickedness. And Babylon had one of the one, seven wonders in the world. The, the Babylon, the, the hanging gardens of Babylon. And now where is it? We're still fighting over that land today. When you see pictures of it, it's still a dust bowl. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited. Wrath of the Lord. God's angry with Babylon. But it shall be wholly desolate, empty. Everyone, have you noticed what, what these last few chapters, the, being against these nations, desolate, keeps showing up. Everyone that goes by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. Again, we've already read that in the previous chapter. What God does to these nations, people are just going to say, wow. But yet they don't get right. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. Surround her. All ye that bend the bow, the army, shoot at her. Fire. Spare no arrows. Use all the arrows you got. For she has sinned against the Lord. Victory. Not to those that are against the Lord, though. Shout against her round about. She has given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is a vengeance of the Lord. Take a vengeance upon her as she has done. Do unto her. Revelation 18, 2 and 8. We're also jumping far ahead into the future with this Babylon. Cut off the sower from Babylon. It's the guy who plants. And him that handles the sickle in the time of harvest. That's the one that, that gathers. From the beginning of the crops to the ending of the crops. For fear of the oppressing sword shall... The oppressing sword... They shall turn everyone to his people. And they shall flee everyone to his own land. They're not going to do the crops no more. There's going to be no more farming. That's where America's going today, you know. You need farming to survive. You know, you just don't go to the grocery store and, di oh, there's my corn. That's where, when we were joking the other day, having fun in the dairy cooler. And I walked in, and the guy's working, he was doing it. I said, oh, that's where milk comes from. And we were laughing, cutting up. But that's not where milk comes from. And walking in the grocery store, that's not where your vegetables and all come from. They come from the ground. They come from people who work them. And America is getting rid of her farmers. There's bumper stickers all over the place. Save the farms. And if we get rid of all our farmers and rely on other nations, work in a grocery store like I do or pay attention tag. Find out that most of your food is not coming from America. It's coming from other nations. And he with the bread gets to make the rules. Israel is a scattered sheep. And they are. They're all over the place. They're all over the world. I wonder if there's any in the Antarctic. Probably. Because Israel are smart people. There are scientists down there. Israel is developing all kinds of wonders and technology in their homeland. I wonder if there's any Hamites, Africans down in Antarctica. I guarantee there's probably a Jew there. Because they said he, he's scattered. The lions have driven him away. Well, Satan is driven away. All Satan has has driven him away. First, the king of Syria has devoured him. Israel north. And at last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones in Judah, Jerusalem. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land. Why? Genesis 12. I will curse them that curse you. That's a rule. I told you all along that we've been studying these books and studying Babylon. Babylon could have said, listen, God, I understand what, what I've heard. Any people that goes against your people, they're accursed. Much obliged for you thinking about us, but we, we would like to pass on that. We would like to have your blessing. 
I guarantee you can find another nation in Syria can go in there and do just as better a job as us. Thank you very much. We don't want to do it. We'd rather get a blessing. But that's not. Babylon came in and did the dirty deeds of God. For Israel's sin, but you don't mess. Listen. If someone's child is in the store acting up, and you go up to that child and pull his pants down and spank his rear end, don't you be offended when they put you in jail. That child needs to be corrected, but not by you. You let mom and dad do it. If God couldn't find a nation to go after Israel, he would have done something. But God knows there are people who are against him and against his people. And there is more than a doubt to find somebody will go again. Babylon did not have to do it. Free will. But they were obligated for you know whatever they wanted, whatever the thrill. Look at us. They shall not be found. Uh, in those days, in that time, saith Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought. Well, look at the sins of Israel. Look what they've done. And there shall be none. See how God washes away the sin? And the sins of Judah, they shall not be found. See what God does with the sins? For I will pardon them whom I reserve. You know, that pardon is an interesting word. You can't be pardoned if you're not guilty. So what God is saying by using the word pardon in verse 20, Israel at one time will acknowledge that they are guilty. And when they acknowledge they are guilty, they will receive a pardon. You can have the governor go through every correctional facility in his state, or all 50 states. And if he can't find one person in that jail say they're guilty, he's not obligated to pardon anybody. He can't obligate to pardon. So you must be guilty. So Israel will acknowledge their guilt one day. Go up against the land of Mahertheim, even against it, and against the inhabitants of Pekah. Waste and utterly destroy after them. That waste showed up last night, saith the Lord, and do according to all that I have commanded thee. God commanded them. And they could turn around and say, No, we don't want to go against the Jews. We don't want to go against. We'd rather be just on your side, Lord. No Christian is called to take arms and fight for the cause of Jesus. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. Now you can join the army. Fight for your country, but in the means of Jesus and the means of God, you're never called to take up arms. Our battles of spiritual battle. How is the hammer of the whole land, or the whole earth, cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? That Babylon's like into a hammer. Israel was a nail. Have you read about nails in, in a sure place? I have laid a snare, that's a trap, for thee. And thou hast also taken, O Babylon. See, God said, listen, I'm going to have to judge you one day, so I'll just give you a job that will cause judgment going after Israel. And thou was not aware. Thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord. You know what they were doing the night that Babylon was defeated, don't you? They were drinking from the Lord's tabernacle. They were drinking the stuff that belonged to God, praising the gods of wood and metal and junk. The Lord has opened his armory and has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Lord, the God of hosts, in the land of Chaldean. Chaldean, yeah, Chaldean. So Babylon falling was the work of God. They cut the water supply, the river. And wait till you read about Babylon and Revelation 18 falling. Come up against her from the utmost border. Open her storehouses. Cast her up as heaps. And destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks. Let them go down to slaughter. Woe unto them. For their day is come, the time of her of, of their visitation. Get rid of all the meat. The grocery stores are being attacked in Babylon. 
me farming the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. They're the ones that got rid of it. They're the ones that destroyed it. They're the ones that enter into God's temple. And guess what? The law stated only the Levite was to be. Only the priest was going. Only who, which Babylonian entered into the holiest of holies to destroy it? Which Babylonians entered into the holy place? Those were taken away, you know, in the list. The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon. Declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon. Archers. Psalms 137a. All ye that bend the bow, army, camp against it round about. Let none of them escape. Recompense her according to her work. According to all that she has done, do unto her. For she has been proud against the Lord. Against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore shall her young men fall in the streets. We've already seen that last night. And all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord. That, you know, I said that's the young, unique, strain. The muscle, you know, they don't show their muscles. Behold, I'm against thee, O thou that most proud. I'm proud to be American. You know what that song is? Put that on the record album. Saith Lord God of hosts. I'm against thee, although it's proud. I'm against America. She's proud. God of hosts, for the, for thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee. Uh -oh. The most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. I will kindle a fire in, this, in his city, and shall devour all around about him. He's talking about the proud. And I talked about over and over, pride and proud never go for, for God. It's a sin to have pride. It is a sin to have proud. It is against God to be prideful. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. Wouldn't let them go. They refuse to let them go. Um, Germany did that in World War II. Their Redeemer, capital R, is strong. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah Witness. Who redeems you? Jesus does. Host is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause. Who does the plead? Who's the advocate according to the Bible? Jesus, Mr. Jehovah Witness. And he may rest in the, he may give rest to the land. What's that rest? The one thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ with him sitting as king in Zion. In Jerusalem. And disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Babylon is fallen long before the millennium. Revelation. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith Lord, upon the inhabitants of Babylon, upon her princes, upon her wise men. Not so wise, are they? A sword is upon the liars. Ooh, what do you think God thinks about liars? They shall dope. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses. Oh, save the horses. Upon their chariots. This is the army. Upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. Babylon has all kinds of people in her. A great melting pot. Would you? I'm sorry, I didn't say that, did I? Did I say uh, mingled? All a whole bunch of nationality. You know, America has much more mingled people than Babylon had. There were no Native Americans in Babylon. There were no uh, Mexicans. In Babylon. There were no Canadians in Babylon. America has more mingled people from all over the world. They are in the midst of her. They shall become as women, weak, delicate, a fearful. A sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. A drought is upon her waters. They shall be dried up. 
And that's exactly how Babylon was, was conquered. For it is a land of graven images, just like America. And they are mad upon their idols. Going wild, going crazy. You've taken them away. Therefore, listen, America is just a sister of Babylon. Rome is a sister of Babylon. You need to do a study of Roman gods and see how they show. You know there's a Roman god in every courthouse in America that the woman is holding the scales as blind. That's a Roman god. You know Atlantis is a Roman god. You need to study. Get your head out of video games. Get your head into a book. Uh, therefore the wild beasts of the desert with the wild beasts of the island shall dwell there. And the owls shall dwell there. And it shall be no more inhabited forever, just animals. Neither shall it be neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Revelation eighteen two. See, well you say they're fighting over there. But we're looking at a future Babylon. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. No one overthrew the Babylon Revelation. God overthrew it. And the neighboring cities. We saw that the other night. Not just Sodom and Gomorrah. Gomorrah. There were other cities thereof, saith the Lord. So shall no man abide there. Neither shall any son of man dwell therein. We just saw that in chapter 49. Behold, a people shall come from the north. That's a very repeated term. Let me give you a little illustration here. Israel was conquered by Babylon. Babylon was conquered by the Persians. The Persians were attacked by the Greeks. The Greeks were overcome by the Romans. The Romans were overcome by Germany. Germany was overcovered by England. England was overcovered by the U.S. Now you find a northern nation attacking the United States. And eventually you'll keep on going so north, guess what? God will do the work. God will use one nation to destroy another nation. The king of Babylon has heard the report of them. I think, no, no. People come from the great name. Verse 42. They shall hold their bow and the lance. That's a type of weapon. A long pole. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Satan-like. You never find Satan given any mercy. Any. Because this is Satan-like. Their voice shall roar like the sea. They shall ride upon horses. Every one put in array. It's a, it's a standard. They're in line. They're in order. Like a man to go to battle against the old daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon has heard the report of it. Or them, excuse me. And his hands wax feeble. He's afraid. He's scared. Anguish took hold of him. And pangs as of a woman. There's that woman to travail again. You know, you women, when you go through your pains and all that, you, just, you say, well, how do you describe the pain? Describe it as a nation that is just fallen, complete, utter desolation by God. Because that's what God likes it to And no man was built for that pain, by the way. Women were built for that pain, but not man. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan. And there are certain times of the years that Jordan swelled his banks, became a mighty fortress or river, unto the habitation of the strong. But I will make them suddenly run away from her. Who is, who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me, God? Who will I appoint me, God, the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me, God? Therefore, here we read about that last night. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord, that he that is taken against Babylon in his purpose. You know, Cyrus was a chosen vessel. Darius was a chosen vessel. Daniel had great favor with them. Even when the king threw him in the lion's pit. That king stood up all night long praying and worried. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord. They 
that he has taken against Babylon and his purposes, and he, that he has purpose against the land of Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. And at the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. Now that you run to Revelation. It says all the sailors are in mourning. The city falls, and I mean, it literally falls. And the cry is heard among the nations. Pick up Revelation from here. This is not the, the Babylon today. This is a future Babylon. Yeah, this was the Babylon back in Jeremiah's time, but yet this is a, a future Babylon. Both are will and, and, and are destroyed. This Babylon goes all the way back to uh, Nimrod. And all the fallen gods are incorporated in Babylon and stretch themselves out with their children to all the religions. You'll find that most of the majority of religions are based and are founded, are built in Babylon. 